Here we go. So Apostle Winnie Hamilton and standing in for Apostle Winnie Hamilton is none other than Apostle Joseph Osborne. Take it away. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank the Lord that this is the day that the Lord has made and truly uh, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And I'm so excited once again to come to you um, today. Praise God. And I thank God that I can be a blessing to you. And I thank God for this opportunity. And I thank God uh, for my apostle, Chief Apostle, Dr. Winnie Hamilton, for allowing me the opportunity once again uh, to come through and be a blessing to your family of God. So let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we glorify you and we honor you. We thank you, God, that you are so awesome. You're such a good, good father. We thank you for the very breath of life. We thank you for the brand new day that you've given unto us, King of glory. We thank you, Father, that this is the day of purpose. Father, we give you all the praise and adoration and we exalt your holy name. We thank you now, Father, for this opportunity that we could come together as a family of God over this uh, radio station, TV radio station, that we thank you for this place of God that we're able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we bless you and we glorify you and we honor you, that your name be glorified, your name be lifted up, your name be magnified. I pray that you'll bless this lesson, bless the listeners, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, and bless me, oh God, as I sit down and you stand up in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, today we're still continuing uh, on the continuation of the lesson um, on the believer's authority. Praise God on the believer's authority. And so um, as we go back to last week, just to recap on a few things quickly on last week's lesson, praise God. And, and what we have said is that um, the authority of the believer is that we have authority um, over the wild schemes of the enemy, over every evil forces, demonic forces, demons. We have authority as a believer, as a child of God who has accepted Jesus Christ into their life and has been born again, praise God. You have that authority, praise God. Uh, through Jesus Christ, we have authority through Christ, amen. And our combat with the devil always should be with the conscious that we have authority over the devil. So don't let the enemy uh, lie to you that you have no authority. You have authority. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Um, and so in, in saying that, we need to understand that the enemy is a defeated foe. The enemy is a defeated foe. Praise God. Amen. And so we're not fighting the devil family of God. He has been defeated already. Praise God. Amen. So he is a defeated foe. Praise God. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ defeated him for us. Amen. And authority over the devil belongs to all believers. Praise God. Belongs to all believers. Amen. And so we're going to go back to... Um, Last week's scripture uh, is Luke chapter 10, verse 19 to verse 20. Luke chapter 10, verse 19 to verse 20. Amen. And the word of God says, listen carefully. I've given you authority that you now possess family of God. So as a child of God, as a believer, as a kingdom citizen, as a kingdom ambassador, know that God has already given you this authority, amen, through Jesus Christ, praise God. Now you possess this authority in Christ is in you, praise God, amen. To tread upon serpents, to tread on serpents, sorry, and scorpions, and the ability to exercise authority, over all the power of the enemy, who is Satan, and nothing in any way will harm you. Praise God. Amen. So that's the assurance that we have as children of God, as we stand in our authority in Christ. Amen. Nothing in any way will harm us. Praise God. Amen. 
as we stand in our authority in Christ, knowing who we are and whose we are and knowing who resides on the inside of us, who is the person of the Holy Spirit, praise God. And we are properly clothed with our spiritual armor. Amen. Praise God. And as I said previously before, that we are not fighting uh, the devil, but we are resisting the devil. Praise God. According to uh, James 4 verse 7, submit to God, uh, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Okay. He will flee from you when you choose to submit to God's authority, when you choose to submit to God's will, God's way, God's plan, God's purpose, God's order, God's apostolic order. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The original blueprint of God's order. Amen. Apostolic is the original blueprint of God's order. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so it says in verse 20, nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits are subject to you. But rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. And so we do not marvel at the fact that, you know, demons are subjected to us. And uh, we, we, we cast out demons, praise God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, but Jesus says, nevertheless, don't rejoice over this. Okay. But he says, rejoice that this, don't rejoice that your names is recorded in heaven. The book of life. Amen. Praise God. Salvation. That's the most important thing for us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so as we discussed last week, when we look at the passage of scripture in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, and we said that the word tread um, is the word subjugate. Okay. The word tread means uh, preservation from danger. Okay. And we know that in verse 19, that we have been given this authority. Amen. Through Jesus Christ by God the Father. We have been given this authority, okay? And we said that authority, it, it, it comes from the Greek word exousia, E-X-O-U-S-I-A. And that word means delegated power, okay? It refers to the authority God uh, gives his saints, amen? Praise God. And we also discussed the word authority, what does the word authority mean? It means, it means power to influence or command thought, opinion, or behavior. A person who has authority over another person, a person who has the power to give orders or make decisions. Praise God. Amen. And so we've discovered, according to scripture, uh, when we read the scriptures, that we understand uh, Jesus Christ has disarmed the powers and, and authorities. Okay, the word authority is exousia again, and made the, a public spectacle of them. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Jesus has authority over all. He is far above all authority, dominion, and power, and he is superior to all. Okay? Praise God. Amen. And so we understand, family of God, that we have authority over them, the serpents, the scorpions. Uh, according to uh, Luke 10, verse 90, we have uh, authority over uh, demons. We have authority over evil spirits. We have authority um, over the devil. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We have that authority. So therefore, we do not fight the devil, but we are resisting him. Amen. According to James 4 verse 7. So we are standing first, fast against him. Amen. Praise God. As we are fully armed with the whole armor of God, clothed with the whole armor of God, the spiritual armor. Amen. Full of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And we are full of the word of God. That is very important. Amen. And then the enemy will flee from you. In other words, the enemy will run in terror from you because you have chosen to be in subject to God's authority, to be submissive to God's authority. Praise God. And that's how you'll be able to stand firm, family of God, in knowing who you are and knowing whose you are and know whom resides on the inside of you. Praise God. That is very powerful truth. Amen. And you, this, this truth must become awakened in your conscious family of God. 
where the enemy might try to fool your mind with lies, praise God, but you can counterattack with the word of God. Amen. You don't have to react uh, 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 like the enemy and run in fear and, 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 and panic and anxiety and be intimidated by the lies of the devil. No, but you stand in your authority in who you are in him. Praise God, knowing that you are seated in heavenly places, the place of authority, amen, in Christ. In him you live, in him you move, in him you have your being family of God. Praise God, hallelujah. And Christ in you is the hope of glory. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so you stand in that authority, in Christ, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, amen. And so today we're gonna go a step further in this lesson, amen. And I wanna continue um, talking about the function in authority slash under authority, okay? So after you know who you are, family of God, you have to know what authority is and what is your authority. And this is why we're taking the time with this lesson, praise God, to teach you what is your authority in Christ and who does your authority come from? It comes from Jesus, amen, as a believer. It comes from Jesus. Praise God. So when you are, when you made Jesus Christ, uh, praise God, when you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 says, You are delivered from the power of darkness, absence of spiritual light. The word light there means authority. Okay, so, and we understand authority is the word exousia, the Greek word, right? And it means to delegate power in his name. So according to Luke 10 verse 19, he has given us authority and power to tread. The word tread means to subjugate. So we have been given authority and power as, as, as believers, amen, praise God, hallelujah, as kingdom believers, kingdom citizens, kingdom ambassadors, praise God, hallelujah. We have been given that authority and that power in his name, in his name. And we know that in his name, Every knee has to bow and every tongue has to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And so according to Luke 10, 19, delegated power in his name, family of God, thought of jurisdiction or dominion over a certain realm. We are assigned to take territory. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we stand in a position of victory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we have to remind the enemy what he is not allowed to do in our lives, in our homes, in our families. Praise God. We have to remind the enemy what he's not allowed to do. And this is why you have to become more aware of your position in Christ so that you stand strong, you stand firm, you stand rooted and grounded in the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah, of knowing who you are in Christ, amen, and knowing him residing on the inside of you because he who is in you, within you, is greater than he that's in the world. Praise God, hallelujah, glory to God, amen, and so you don't have to walk in fear because God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he's given you a spirit of power and of love. And of a sound mind, family of God. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so this is where you are able to walk in victory, to walk in power. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is, is power. Amen. It is power. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And we got to operate in that power, family of God. In the power, amen, uh, that we are infused by the Holy Spirit. Our supernatural enablement comes through the Holy Spirit, amen? From the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 1 verse 8, amen? Praise God, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, amen? Glory to God. You stand in that uh, authority in Christ, amen? Praise the Lord, amen? And the word power there means dunamis, the dunamis power, amen? Praise God, hallelujah. And in that place, Amen. As we walk in that authority, amen, in the truth of that authority, knowing that we carry the dunamis power, amen, through the Holy Spirit, 
praise God. Therefore, we can uh, be able to uh, demonstrate dunamis. Dunamis means miracles, signs, and wonders. This is the church of Jesus Christ today should be operating and functioning in the true authentic power of Jesus Christ in miracles, signs, and wonders. This is not a dead gospel. Amen. Amen. For I am not ashamed, the apostle declares, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is power unto salvation. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. And so we walk in victory. We walk in power. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so let's look at Matthew 12, verse 37. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to give you some scriptures. Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 12. This is just to encourage you. Amen. Of what I've just said now. Praise God. Matthew chapter 12 verse 37. Thank you, Jesus. For by your words reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of guilt of sin. And by your words rejecting me, you will be condemned and sentenced. And so it's important to understand, family of God, that your character is important. Your character is so important. And I think a lot of times people neglect the area of, the, of, of their character. We must understand, family of God, that our character must line up to Jesus Christ. Must line up with Jesus Christ. Amen. As we are believers, praise God. Amen. We need to have the reflection of Jesus Christ in our life. Amen. Because Jesus is our example. Praise God. Amen. According to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, Jesus is our example. Amen. And we got to walk in that footsteps. We've got to follow in his footsteps. So he's our Lord and our Savior, but he's also our elder brother. He is our example. Amen. Praise God of what we ought to be, of what we ought to become. Amen. And how we need to be uh, 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 functioning in the earth just as he is. Amen. Praise God. Because the scripture says in 1 John 4, 17, um, as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. And so we got to look at the life of Jesus as the purpose of God is for us to become more like Jesus, according to Romans 8, verse 29. That's the purpose, family of God, is to become more like Jesus so that we can represent Jesus well in the earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's look at Proverbs 4, 23. Proverbs 4, 23. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 4, 23. And the word of the Lord says, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. So it's important in this season to guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard what you allow to enter your heart. The scripture says, out of your heart flows the issues of life. So it's important in this season to guard your heart. Number two, it is important that you allow the Holy Spirit to put a rear guard over your heart when you are listening to preachings or teachings today. Because many people are saying a lot of things and some people are even saying things out of context, out of scripture. And so the Holy Spirit will come in and put a rear guard over your heart to protect you, amen? Because there's two things what the Holy Spirit does. He protects truth and he exposes error. Because the word of God says in this season, in this time, people will have itchy ears wanting to hear things, what they want to hear that benefits themselves, that, 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 that will not challenge them to think, to challenge their thinking, to bring about change from the inside out so they could have an outward manifestation. Praise God. And this is why it's so important that your minds have to be renewed daily, family of God. To this truth. That's why the scripture says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, for us not to be conformed to the pattern of this world family, 
but to be re, but be transformed. The word transform means change by what? The renewing of our mind. Renewal of the mind is so important. It is daily and it is key for discipleship. Amen. Praise God. And for your mind to be deprogrammed from the kingdom of darkness and reprogrammed to the kingdom of light. Amen. Praise God. And so that you stand in what the word of God says concerning who you are, whose you are, whom resides on the inside of you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What he's created you to be, what he's called you to do. And you stand in that authority in Christ. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So the word of God is foundational family of God. And we, I must understand that the word of God, it gives you deliverance. This is why it's important that we take time with lessons. That's why it's important a uh, 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 chief apostle takes time um, teaching certain lessons. She does series. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Because that's our assignment is to teach the word. Amen. So that you are properly founded in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, so that we are perfecting you, people of God, that we are equipping you for the work of the ministry. Praise God. Amen. According to Ephesians chapter four. Amen. And the word perfecting there means mature. And so the assignment, amen, of the apostles and the prophets, praise God, is to mature you, is to mature your spirit, man. Amen. Praise God. And this lesson is to mature, to develop your spirit, man, so that you can stand upright. You can stand in your position, in your stane position. Amen. I mean, in an upright position that your spirit is upright. Amen. Praise God. And you can stand in boldness. Amen. And in, in Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And declare by the spirit of God. Hallelujah, who you are and whose you are. And in that situation, you can decree and declare the word of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. Praise God. And he says he's given you that authority and that power. Amen. Hallelujah, to lay hands on the sick. Praise God. And they will be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, glory to God. To cast out devils in his name. Amen. Praise God. But you got to make sure that you have an intimate personal relationship with Jesus. You got to make sure that your spirit man is matured, it's developed, and it's nourished. That is so important. So that you stand in that authority in Christ. And you can use the name of Jesus effectively because you have the right to do that because of your spirit man being in a stane position. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And you can speak life into dead situations. Hallelujah. You can speak light into dead situations as well, family of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And at the name of Jesus, hallelujah, demons, amen, will tremble. And at the name and the sound of the name of Jesus, you have that authority. You have that power, family of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so you stand firm in your authority. Resist the enemy. Amen. As you stand firm on the word of God, on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And he will flee from you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we must understand, family of God, that we are in a season right now where there is great spiritual warfare. And so it's important for you, according to Ephesians chapter 6, praise God, for you to put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Praise God. And so spiritual warfare will give you tools. Um, it is only by using God's word in the name of Jesus that we have authority over demons' powers. Amen. Let's look at the word of God. Mark chapter 16. Praise the Lord. Amen. I pray that you are following me in the word of God and that you are taking your notes. Amen. So that you can go back and study the scriptures and grow so that you can glow. Praise God and receive your healing and your deliverance. Praise God, because true, true deliverance comes from the washing of the word of God. Amen. The word of God says in Psalms uh, 119 that the word of the Lord is entrance of light into the dark areas, praise God. And that area is your solical area, praise God, amen. Mark chapter 16, 
Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Okay. Verse 17 and 18. These signs will accompany those who have believed in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so we understand, family of God, it is only by using God's word in the name of Jesus that we have authority. Glory to God. Amen. That we have authority over demon powers, evil spirits. Praise God over all demonic forces. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. So Jesus came, family of God. Jesus overcame the devil. Okay. According to scripture. And you can read Matthew chapter four. Amen. Jesus intercedes with the father with the words we speak. Giving us believers authority. You have authority, family of God. Because we know who we are and whose we are. And so it's important to know your identity in Christ. And before we began this, this series on the Believer's Authority, Chief Apostle uh, uh, Dr. Winnie Hamilton was teaching on uh, who you are in Christ. And that is so important, family of God, that you need to know who you are in Christ. Amen. Meditate on that. Praise God. So that you can speak that into your life and you can walk in victory. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. So as believers with authority from God, so as believers with authority from God through Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, number one, Jesus secured our power and authority. Jesus secured our power and authority. So family, that means Jesus succeeding in securing our power by going to the cross. Jesus came in obedience to God because of Adam's disobedience in the garden. Jesus was called the last Adam, according to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verse 45. After securing that power and authority, he freely gave the authority over into the hands of those who would believe on him. Amen. And that is talking about you and I. If you believe in Jesus Christ, praise God. Amen. He has freely given you this authority. Amen. And this authority, this power is secure in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So you don't have to think that uh, you are not worthy. No. You are a child of the most high God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let's, let's look at Ephesians 1 verse 13. Amen. To confirm what I just said to you now. Praise God. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Sorry. Amen. Blessed and worthy of praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ. That is our position, amen, of authority in Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. So Jesus' words are vital and real today as when they were first spoken. Amen. So we got to take a hold of the word of God, family. Take a hold of this truth, family of God. Amen. That you have this authority through Jesus Christ. And it's secured. Our power and our authority is secured in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Number two, we have authority to preach the gospel. Amen. So family, the authority that you receive from Jesus Christ, amen, by the Holy Spirit, praise God. You have this authority to preach the gospel. Amen. You have authority to preach the gospel. So this means, family, every born-again believer 
has the authority and responsibility to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in this earth. So therefore, you ought not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You stand in boldness and you stand in confidence because your reliance and your assurance is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so you preach the gospel with confidence, with boldness and authority and in power. There must be demonstration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Miracle signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Number three, we have authority to stand against Satan. Family, you have authority today to stand against Satan. You have been given this authority the moment you accepted Jesus in Christ into your life. Amen. And you were born again by the spirit of God. Amen. You have received this authority to stand against Satan. Satan. Remember I said to you previously before in the lesson that we are not fighting the devil, but we are resisting him. Amen. We are resisting him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we, when it means that we have authority to stand against Satan, it means that we have that authority to identify the demons. We have authority to locate them. Okay. Uh, locate them, meaning we can locate certain demons can be in the mind, in the, in the abdomen, uh, assigned to the parts, okay, of according to Acts chapter 19, okay, by the discerning of the spirits. So that's why it's important that we be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and pray for a stronger discerning of spirits. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at uh, the nature of demons. I want to share this with you, and I pray this be a blessing. Let's look at some of the characteristics um, of the nature of demon, of, of demon, sorry. Okay. Let's look at Ezekiel 28, verse three. Ezekiel 28, verse three. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ezekiel 28, verse three, amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 3. Amen. And the word of God says, Behold, you are imaging yourself wiser than Daniel. There is no secret you think that is hidden from you. Okay, amen. So number one, uh, they are intelligent and wise. Okay, demons are intelligent and wise. And you can also make reference to 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. Number two. Another characteristic or nature of demons. Number two, they possess knowledge. They possess knowledge. Let's look at Matthew 8, 29. Matthew 8, verse 29. Praise God. And they screamed out, what business do we have in, in common with each other, son of God? Have you come to torment us before the appointed time of judgment? Okay, praise God. So what we understand, they possess knowledge. Another scripture reference you can look at is Luke 4, verse 41. Luke 4, verse 41. And you can also look at Acts 19, verse 15. Acts 19, verse 15. Okay, they possess knowledge, but remember this, their knowledge is, 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 is the, the, the knowledge of the devil is lies. Okay, demons are liars. Okay, number three, they can identify and recognize people. They can identify and recognize people. Okay, 
And we looked at in, in, in the book of Acts chapter 19, when the demon, uh, the evil spirit said to the sons of Sceva, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Okay, that's why it's important for you to know who you are, whose you are, and whom resides on the inside of you. Know what is your grace into as well, family of God. Know what God has graced upon your life. Know your metron too. That is so important. Know your ranking too. That's important. Praise God. You cannot just go out and do your own things. You have to follow God's blueprint. God's blueprint is apostolic order. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And ministries do need apostolic dimension, family of God, so that we can be effective in the earth. Amen. And we can influence the lives of people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God to bring change to the lives of people. Praise God to be that salt in the earth, to be that light uh, in, the midst of, in the midst of this darkness in this world. Amen. To be the hope to someone, to be the solution to someone's life. Praise God. As we point people back to Jesus, we point people to God and we point people to the word of God and we never point people to ourselves. You never draw attention to yourself. Okay. There's no time to play around with demons. You cast them out by the spirit of God and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number four. Um, they have supernatural power to do miracles and perform outstanding features. They have supernatural power to do miracles and perform outstanding features. Okay. And you can make reference to the scripture in Revelations chapter 16, verse 14. Revelations chapter 16, verse 14. Amen. Number five, they can teach and instruct others. They can teach and instruct others. This is another characteristic of, of, of demons. They can teach and instruct others. <laughs> wow. And that's what the word of God says in 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. But the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit, explicitly and unmistakably declares that in latter times, some will run away from the faith, paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons. That's why you have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Pray for a stronger discerning of spirits. This is why it's also important that you allow yourself According to Romans 8, verse 14, those who are led by the Holy Spirit are true sons of God. And the word led there means governed. So those who allow themselves to be led and governed and directed by the Spirit of God, they are true sons of God. In other words, they are the mature ones. Praise God. So you've got to be very careful of what you're listening to today and who you're listening to today. It can sound good, but is it God? That is very important. So you be sensitive to the Holy Spirit family of God. You hear and obey what the Holy Spirit has to say. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Number six, another characteristic or nature of demons, they can bring discord, division, and strive between people. That's what they do. They bring discord, division, and strive between people. And you can read a scripture reference is Matthew chapter 13, verse 39. Matthew chapter 13, verse 39. And you can also read 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 21 to 24. First Kings chapter 22, verse 21 to 24. Amen. Praise God. Number seven. Another nature or characteristic of a demon. Number seven. 
They falsely accuse us before God and to teach other just like their master. They falsely accuse us before God and to teach other just like they are master. Okay, so we have to be aware of all of this family of God. This is why I'm giving this to you today so that you become aware. Okay, you become sober, you become vigilant, you become alert, okay? Scripture reference is Job chapter one, verse seven to 12. Job chapter 1, verse 7 to 12, you can read. You can also read Job chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. Job chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. And you can also read Revelations chapter 12, verse 10. Revelations chapter 12, verse 10. Praise God. Amen. So don't entertain the lies of the enemy if you have fallen. Today, I tell you today by the word of God that you have an advocate with the Father, that you can get up and don't set up camp in your mistakes. Don't set up camp in the midst of your valleys. Your valleys are meant for you to go through. You have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ, who is faithful and just to forgive you as you, con you acknowledge that you've sinned, you confess your sins, and you repent. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Point number eight, another characteristic and nature of demons. Number eight, they are worldly and fashion-minded. They are worldly and fashion-minded. Okay, this is why it's important. The scripture says that we are in this world, but not of this world. We are assigned, amen, and we are called to be set apart to be different. We cannot compromise our walk with God. We cannot compromise the word of God. We cannot compromise God's standard. God is the standard. Amen. Praise God. Scripture reference, praise God, is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. And you can also read 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Praise God. I'm giving you a lot of scriptures. So I pray that you are writing it down and so that you can go back and research and study. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the last point, number nine, another uh, character or nature of demons, number nine, they have degrees of wickedness just like humans. They have degrees of wickedness just like humans. Scripture reference is Matthew chapter 12, verse 45. Matthew chapter 12, verse 45. You can also read Luke chapter 8, verse 2. Luke chapter 8, verse 2. And you can also read Luke chapter 11, verse 26. Luke chapter 11. Verse 26. Praise God. Amen. And as we're about to draw uh, to a close, I just want to give you these more pointers um, of understanding your authority in Christ, the believer's authority, family. Um, we are seated with him in high authority. Praise God. Amen. And as we look at in the book of Ephesians, Paul prayed for the body of believers in, in, in Ephesus. When you read um, Ephesians chapter one, okay. One part of that prayer was that they know the exceeding greatness of his power to those who believe. That exceeding great power is the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. Amen. And sit him at his own right hand in heaven. Praise God. As believers, family of God, we are part of his body. And we are seated with him in that highly exalted place of authority. Amen. So our authority and power is secured in Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you look at Ephesians chapter 1, this is so powerful. I encourage you to, to really read this. 
And um, also you can use it um, as a way to pray, as a tool to pray. Praise God. Just, I just wanna get it for you quickly. Um, Ephesians chapter one, from verse 16, And you can read from verse 16 um, all the way to uh, 23. And you can use that as a way to pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, family, we have the power of God's word to exercise our authority. We have that family. We have the power of God's word to exercise our authority. And we just read that uh, the foundation scripture of this lesson is Luke chapter 10, verse 19 to 20. And also 1 John 4, 17. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And you can also read 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Amen. Glory to God. The next point, we have authority to act as new creations. We have authority to act as new creations. According to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man uh, be engrafted in Christ, praise God. He is a new creature. He's a new creation. Amen. So therefore God does not patch up people. Amen. He does not patch up anyone. He makes you brand new. Amen. You become brand new. You become quality new. Qualitatively new. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you stand in Christ's authority. Glory to God. And so in that place, you have authority to act as new creation in Christ, in your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus partook of flesh and blood so that you could partake of spirit and life. For you to partake of that spirit and life, we must take the responsibility of standing in the place of authority as the new creation in Christ Jesus, that we are in him already. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So you got to take that responsibility today. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I pray that this lesson is challenging you today to take your authority in your stand, in the place of your authority. Amen. As the new creation. Amen. In Christ Jesus that you are through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you can read First Peter. Chapter 1, verse 23. 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 23. You can also read Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 21 to 24. Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 21 to 24. Amen. Family of God, you also must know this truth. We are in authority. Amen. We are in authority. So family, knowing that we are in authority, amen, praise God, it is our responsibility as believers to put off the old man, the unregenerated man that we were before we accepted Jesus into our lives. Praise God. The Holy Spirit does the actual work in us. That's why it's important for you to, to, to partner with the Holy Spirit, to be born again, amen, by the Spirit of God. Scripture says, unless a man be born again, he will not enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. But we must make the decision to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. Scripture says in uh, Philippians 2 verse 13 in the Amplified Version, it says not in your own strength, family. So you cannot do it in your own strength, and your own ability. You need the Holy Spirit. And you have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit resides on the inside of you. He is a person. He is your helper. He is your helper. He is your counselor. He's your advocate. Amen. He's your strengthener. Praise God. And this is why you have to so learn about the person of the Holy Spirit. You've got to so learn about Jesus. Amen. Study the scriptures. Spend time with the word of God. Be willing to be taught. Become an Advent student of God's word. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Not for title. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Holy Spirit actually does this work in us, and we must make the decision to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. 
Amen. God will never force his will on any person. Know that today. God never forces his will on any person. God never forces a relationship with anybody. He's a relationship God. He's a relationship father. And he invites you today to have a personal, intimate relationship with him. Glory to God. We must put off the old man. And that is a responsibility that you and I have. We have to choose to put off the old man. Amen. As we submit to God's authority. Amen. We must use the word of God to renew our minds, family of God. Renewal of the mind only comes through the word of God. And as I said, according to Romans 12 verse 2, we need to be renewed in our mind, not to be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be renewed in our minds upon the word of God through meditation. Amen. Upon the word of God. According to Joshua 1 verse 8, we have to meditate on the word of God daily. Praise God. That is so important, family of God. Amen. So that we may know what to do. We may know God's ways, know what God requires of us, family of God. What to do, how to do it, when to do it, why are we doing it, what to say, how we should say it. And that's how we have to partner with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God in the Bible. It says, and then your ways shall be prosperous and you will have good success, family. And the key is meditation upon the word of God, taking time to spend time with God, taking time to spend time with the Father, being in habitation in his presence and, and spending time with the word. Don't just keep the Bible there in your home um, open and, and not take time to sit down and study the word, study the scriptures, read the word and apply the word because we have to be hearers and doers of the word of God because we're going to become the only walking, talking Bible uh, that people are going to look up to. Not everyone's going to come to church family of God. This is why it's important that we become Advent students of the word of God so that we may bear much fruit as we remain and we abide in the family of God. Praise God. Amen. So we use the word of God to renew our minds, family of God. It's a daily renewal. We put on the new man, which is created in righteousness and true holiness. Family of God. The next point, we can minister and walk from a point of authority. We can minister and walk from a point of authority in our relationship in Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God's power is in his word, family. He is upholding all things by the word of his power. And we can stand in that authority today and decree and declare the word of God into any situation. Praise God. We stand upon the it is written word of God and we decree and declare the it is written word of God. And we will see that God is not a man that he should lie. Has he not said it and shall he not do it? Praise God. Amen. We will see atmospheres shift. Amen. We set the atmosphere for miracles. As we speak, we decree and we declare the word of God. We prophesy life. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we can speak life. Amen. Into dry places, into dry bones. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can read Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. And you can read Acts 3 verse 6. Acts 3 verse 6. Amen. Other scriptures I'll give it to you that you can read. Amen. As the scripture is drawn to a close. I'll give you some scriptures that you can read and meditate upon it. Please take these scriptures down based upon this lesson that will help you so that you are armed with the word of God. Um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 20. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to verse 20. You can also read Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. You can also read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 to 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
verse 20 to 28. And the last scripture, you can read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21 to 22. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21 to 22. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. So family of God, the devil will do everything in his power to keep you from coming into this knowledge of authority over him, this truth, the truth, as a believer, that you have authority over the enemy today and his demons and his evil forces. You need to embrace this truth. We receive this authority when we are born again, as we are made new creatures in Christ Jesus. We inherit the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we can use it in prayer against the enemy. Family, this is important why you need to so learn the truth about your authority that you have in Christ. And I pray that you are being blessed and being encouraged by this truth. And you become more aware of who you are and whose you are and whom resides on the inside of you and what authority you have and what authority you stand in and what authority in whose authority you speak in, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, amen. The enemy will fight you more over this than any other subject. Then after you have come to the knowledge of this authority, he'll oppose you and try to steal it from you. There will be tests, family of God. And sometimes people will fail those tests. The devil wants you to throw up your hands and say, the authority of the believer won't work for you. Family of God, don't entertain the lies of the devil. You have authority in Christ Jesus. Praise God, hallelujah. And so I challenge you today, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God according to Ephesians chapter 6. Amen. Wearing this armor, the believer is protected. You are protected. You are unhampered uh, in his ministry of authority. And you'll be able to stand. You'll be able to stand, family of God. So you have to be dressed in your complete armor of God. You are prepared to withstand every attack of the enemy. The armor of God stays on you. It never gets taken off you because it protects you from spiritual activity while you're in sleep family. And it remains intact through your intimate relationship and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So you stand in a position of victory today, family of God. You pray from a position of victory. Amen. Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen. And it's important for you to exercise your God-given authority you've got to realize that your you've got authority over your own household your family that situation that circumstances and don't entertain the lies of the devil amen well praise god i pray that you are blessed with the word of the lord and i pray that you truly take time to go back and watch and and, and feel free family of god to share this broadcast with your loved ones family and friends so they can be uh, blessed and be encouraged and be equipped and receive healing and deliverance through the word of God. Amen. Praise God. So family today, once again, God gets the glory for this lesson. And I thank you for taking the time to listen. I give God all the glory, the praise and the honor. I thank God for KZ Radio and TV. Amen for this opportunity. Radio TV for this opportunity. Sorry. And I thank God for my apostle, Chief Apostle Dr. Winnie Hamilton for this opportunity again. And I thank God that I could be a blessing to your family of God. Thank you for tuning in, for watching and continue to pray. Um, for us, pray for the radio station, continue to pray, seek God, stay in God, be hidden in the word of God. And today I want you to wherever you are, just reach out to the Lord Jesus. I introduce you to come into a love affair relationship with Jesus. Amen. Wherever you are, you can just call out to Jesus, wherever you are, invite him into your life. Praise God. Amen. And allow him to be Lord and Savior in your life and over your life. Praise God. Amen. And go out there, family of God, and be a blessing to God's people. Witness the love of Jesus to someone. Praise God. Amen. 
Amen. I encourage you to go to the house of God. If you're not going to the house of God, go to the house of God where you can learn and grow. A house that is spirit-full, spirit-led, that is word-based. Amen. Praise God. Do not neglect the gathering of the saints. Amen. I encourage you if, you, if you, if you're not taking time to learn the word, take time to study. Study the word. Amen. Praise God so that you can arm yourself with the word of God. So family, thank you once again. Um, and I pray this lesson has been a blessing to you. And I pray that as you have been taught, that you will go out today in victory as a victor, not a victim. Amen. And not defeated because you're more than a conqueror. You're more than an overcomer. You are who God says you are. Praise God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. God bless you. Shalom.